seventh step. Practice of relaxation in occupation breaks up occupational tension, relaxing the muscles of the skull and face. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Revelations 3.20 This is a wonderful saying because it enables us to realize the great importance of the oneness of life. It means that the Christ, the God, is knocking at the door of man's heart, man's minds. And if anyone opens their ear to hear and hear the voice and open the door, then the Christ will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me, showing there can be no separation, none of them, no separation. What a beautiful story it is to realize the importance of the fact that there is no separation anywhere. But those who have passed on are still with us. I know this so very, very well because I am mostly in contact with those who have passed. And a few days ago, I was told by one who talks to me very quietly, said that our great brother Smuts will pass during this week. I told Mary, I told others about it, and I said, watch and see how true this is. And it has come to pass. A great man, one of Africa's greatest men. Not only is he a son of Africa, but he is a son of the world. And South Africa is proud today to see so many thousands of people in all grades of life, sending their tokens of sympathy and realizing that the world has lost a great man. But I say this to you, the world has not lost a great man but has gained a greater because those who have passed on are with us. And I say this to you without doubt, without fear of contradiction, that the spirit of General Smuts will guide South Africa into that glorious state of which it can be. I am convinced of that fact. I knew some of the great statesmen at home. I was aware of their activities. 
I remember Balfour very well. Balfour attended a meeting that I was at, a very small meeting, but a meeting where we made contact with higher spiritual forces. And Balfour was a great man and a guide to the state. I know this to be true, that those who have passed on have not left us, but their spirits shall guide us, truly guide us. I feel deeply the loss of this great and wonderful soul to be heir, but I know that he will help us on our journey. O great and mighty Father God, that thou hast chosen to experience Express thyself through one who has given great spirit of heart to many souls and guided the destiny of a land that is dear to all of us. Great and mighty Father, thou art the Father of man, and thou hast deemed necessary to take him away into the higher place of action and there guide the spiritual forces the destiny of the world we thank thee Father that thou hast used that thou hast made him what is that we can look for the glory of many others who are coming to follow him. Just as Jesus passed, so we feel. See? The Spirit is always ready to act for us and in us when we understand ourselves and free ourselves from our own self-imposed habits that limit and inhibit our true activity. In our daily living, we create tensions where we should have perfect relaxation. When we are tensed, we are easily made to fear. But when we are relaxed, we use our head instead of our viscera, lungs and heart, to cope with any situation. The majority of people are tensed in their daily life. They are anxious about this and anxious about that. Even today, all the trouble is about things, things, things. We're anxious about things, too anxious about things. And it's necessary for us to think deeply so that we can get out of this limitation into a greater understanding so that our tensions will leave us and we shall be free. We should practice relaxation wherever we are, wherever we can, and when we do this, consciously we will get results. Thus we enter into the wider aspect of this important scientific practice of relaxation, thereby eliminating cerebellum misbehavior. Think of what takes place now. 
cerebellum misbehavior. When you are anxious, your body becomes tensed. That tension is telegraphed back to the cerebellum. The cerebellum takes on that tension and reacts in such a way as to create misbehavior because you are tensed. The very opposite of tension is relaxation. When you relax your muscles and your body, that message is telegraphed again back to the cerebellum. And then it gives up its misbehavior. And when that misbehavior ceases, there is a feeling of ease and comfort in the body. The cerebrum then, this thinking part of your brain, realizing what is taking place, becomes freed. Free. Think of the vicious circle. We are all prone to it. Even myself. I know because when I recognize what I am doing, I know what it means. I know perfectly well that I work too hard every day, and many of you do the same thing. And when anything happens to me, for instance, in my Vanity is pricked, because I think that I should go on forever and ever without anything interfering at all. So my vanity is pricked. So I say that I am vain too. Don't think that I am just, just one of those people uh, who is above that certain amount of vanity, by no means. But when we recognize what we are doing, we are able to set about the elimination of it. And that is what we have got to do. When we find ourselves tensed, we've got to see that we can get relaxation. Most people sit or stand most of the day, and most people who sit or stand most of the day, sit or stand in a tense condition when they could easily sit or stand in a relaxed condition, thereby improving their health, their wealth and happiness. Remember, when you relax, you break up these emotional habit patterns that are retarding your health. You're thinking, you're working. How many hours do you sit in a day? Some sit eight hours a day at work and then sit another four hours when they get home. Is that not true? How important it is then for us to learn how to sit in a relaxed condition, for this is truly our finest medicine. There is compensation. If we are sitting all day, we should compensate by doing something else. If you are sitting over your books all day, and you go home to read a book all night, then you are causing cerebellum misbehavior. But if you get out into the garden and dig for a while, look at your flowers or whatever the case may be, or have a hobby, then you are compensating. And that is relaxation. You cannot sit in a relaxed condition if your muscles are out of place. That is when they are pulling to keep your head from falling off, or your shoulders from touching your stomach. To sit in a hunched up position is not relaxation. Now the way to get proper relaxation is to put your hands above your head, like this. Bring your hands down to your side. 
that all your muscles are in place, don't drop your shoulders, but feel that everything is in place, then sit down, and you will find that you sit down like this. Now this center of gravity is passing through my head to my feet. These are most important things. They mean a lot for your health. Before sitting down, you should stand up straight. Put your arms above your head, thumbs touching. Stretch up and look forward. Feel that your head and neck are free. The center of gravity should flow from the top of your head straight to your feet. Now bring your hands down to your side without dropping your shoulders and you will feel a perfectly relaxed feeling. This is because there is no pull in any direction and all the muscles have gone into place. The force of gravity is always in operation in any part of the body that is out of alignment, is pulling towards the floor with the result that there is muscle tension required to keep it in its place. Learn to relax in your armchair so that you get the best relaxation possible. If you have a relaxed chair, lean back on it so that the weight is taken on your shoulders. The head is also supported. If your chair is a straight back chair, sit as far back as possible so that the lumbar curve fits into the back of the chair. I showed you there that sitting down to get proper relaxation, you must see that your back is like this. Watch me now. This is scientific relaxation. Sit back as far as possible so that you feel the back getting into your chair. There you are. Now you can feel the position where your head is. Suppose I put my head forward like this. Now, immediately I feel a drag on my shoulders, my head is falling toward the floor. If I put my head back to death, it is going toward the back. What do I do? I move myself perfectly easy till I find the perfect balance. Now I do that. I relax now and place my hands on my lap, just like this so that the weight is taken off the arm and therefore I can sit like this all night. That is a yogi posture. Now remember the position you held when standing. Find the center of gravity by moving your body backwards and forwards until you feel the comfortable position where there is no pool. You'll soon find it. Place your hands on your lap. This will take the drag off your shoulders. In this position, you are ready to practice relaxation while sitting. Feet should be about 12 inches apart and flat on the floor. Now talk to your neck muscles, back, arms, legs, as already instructed. And don't forget to drop your jaw. In this position, your body will fall into the right position. You will find that the curve you had in your back will leave you. Your tired neck and shoulders muscles, which you have tensed during the day, will be released. Turn your head slowly from side to side. This will release the tension of the vagus nerve and free the thoracic gland, which is most important. And as you turn your head to the side, turn it quite easily. And you will find 
it will release these nerves coming down here and also help to eliminate trouble in your thyroid gland. Allow the chair to take the whole weight of the body. If the head is not in line with the force of gravity, it tends to fall onto the chest, as it does when falling asleep in a sitting position, or falls to the side. When this happens, you have occasionally experienced a stiff neck. This is muscle strain and sometimes displacement of a vertebrae. Therefore, it is not advisable to let the head flop about or hang on the chair. And some people, in relaxation, they say, let your head hang down on your chest like this and flop around. You will see it is wrong. It is entirely wrong. Sometimes when the muscles are stiffened around the ribs, this is indicated by a stitch. The falling relaxing exercise will leave this entirely. The intercostal muscles are tensed very easily and cause severe tired pain in many cases. The cure is to relax the chest muscles. We saw how to relax the chest muscles. When you breathe out, you're lying down on your back, or you can sit. If you have a stitch here around your waist, it is generally a tense muscle. Suppose now you take a breath in <coughs> like this, or you take your breath in, you let it out, Another one. Relax. 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 You'll find that the muscles of your chest will relax and the stitch will disappear. If this sitting exercise does not ease the stitch. Lean forward on the table with your forehead on a pillow and breathe easily. When exhaling, say, let go, let go. The tension is then relieved and the pain will immediately disappear. How many people I have told that to and how easy it is to get it going. The same thing again is to lean on the table. Like this, quite easily. You lean forward as much as you can. Let the table take the whole of your weight. As you're exhaling, let go. I'll guarantee you that you'll lose the stitch from your waist. If you have a novice job, relax in your chair as I have explained, for a few minutes, two or three times a day. Find the easiest position when writing, and don't twist your legs around the legs of the chair. Learn to relax your legs at all times. You will think better, walk better, when your body is relaxed. Writer's cramp and all these complaints can be permanently cured this way. I have had just recently at least a dozen cases of writer's cramp, and I have cured every one of them by simple relaxing exercise. A fellow in Johannesburg couldn't write his own name with writer's cramp. 
and now he's completely well. Another fellow in the tax department, in charge of a department, he got so bad that he couldn't write his own name without scribbling with his hand going away all over the place. Again, tension. Sit relaxed at meal times and see the difference in your digestion. Relax at the cinema, go game, etc. Learn to sit relaxed, take the tension off. Learn to see with your mind and not with your neck muscles, your back muscles, your leg muscles, your chest muscles. You are wasting your energy and creating tension. Remember again that when you can relax during ten scenes, you can relax when you have difficulties in your work and play. Learn to relax when there is something difficult before you. A tense scene, a difficult problem, a condition. When you feel self-conscious, try relaxing and see how soon you lose your tension. I'm taking that advice to myself. The time will come that you will relax unconsciously and then your self-consciousness will be gone. Your vanity will be gone. Why are you all in a dither? Because of vanity? Of course it's all, it's all the same. You're wondering how the other people are thinking about you and how you're looking, and what they will say to you, and all the rest of it. But it's all nice and fine, but nevertheless, it is tension. In a hundred and one ways you will benefit when you are relaxed at any social function. You are the center of attraction. It is the law of social economics. In public speaking, in business, in conversation, learn to be relaxed and use your body properly, as I have already told you. Stand with your feet easily on the floor. Be able to get up on your toes so that you feel nicely balanced. Stand as erect as possible, so that the force of gravity is passing down from your head to your feet. A nervous passion alarms others and makes them uncomfortable. Relaxation is the finest form of all educational virtues and precepts. It helps others to enjoy themselves and makes you master of every situation. Learning to stand relaxed on your feet is one of the first rules in public speaking. And in ordinary conversation, the same rule applies. Learn to stand. Learn to talk on your feet. I've seen people who at dinners when they are asked to speak, they're all right when they're sitting down, talking fine. They miserably get on to their feet. Can they talk? No, not a word. I'm sorry, gentlemen. That's all I've got to say. <laughs> Practice little relaxation while you are driving a car. 
you will be more alert driver, a better driver, and you will avoid accidents. Your muscles should be in a state of alert obedience. Remember again, relaxation is the safety valve for all such things as excitement, anger, etc. If you think your wife is extravagant, you may put your foot on the accelerator. There are many hazards created in driving. A man can cut in on you. The old people who do not look where they are going, the pedestrians that will invariably get in your way, the nervous driver who does not know what he is doing, there are hundreds of these hazards at every turn. You can make your driving more pleasant for yourself and others if you will learn to relax while driving. If then somebody cuts in on you and passes you, don't rush up behind him and push him into the curb and start a fight. You can say to yourself, the feeble-minded people drive cars and get licenses. Why should you be affected? You're creating misbehavior in your cerebellum. You are causing this ulcer to become active. Sit well back in your seat, which should be in such a position that you can handle your clutch, brake, and accelerator with ease. Hold the wheel easily and do not grip the wheel like a bike. When your muscles are tight, you make your arms ache. Many drivers create fibrositis in the neck and shoulders and back muscles when driving. Fibrositis is brought about by tight muscles. Let your eyes relax and do not stare, thereby helping your eye muscles. Think of what I told you last week about eyes. You will have a wider vision and be more alert, and it will be a pleasure to drive. You will make it fun instead of work. When you come to the robo, relax. Relax. Don't rebel if the other fellow is not off the mark at once. He's probably relaxing. <laughs> or you are tensing. I could go on telling you how to relax through life. It is the cure for all nervous troubles. Relaxation. 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 The greatest form of relaxation is through music. But I have to go into this later on. There is no room for it in this lecture. As I want to instruct you in the relaxation of the muscles of the scalp of your face. The cause of many headaches is a tight scalp pressing on the nerves that cover the cranium. There is a superficial distribution of nerves that cover the skull, especially those from the great occipital at the back here. These two nerves come out from a little socket in the skull. One goes down here and across on your shoulder, and the other goes up to your skull and spreads over like that. One does it on the other side. The trigeminal nerve is also one that comes out from here. And it spreads itself up and down over the face. 
It is from this snare that you generally get tick dollar rule. Now, tick dollar rule is a very, very painful trouble. And the cause of it is its pressure on that nerve. I have cured many people of tick dollar rule by opening these bones, separating them by my hand taking the pressure off. <coughs> then there is the separate orbital which comes out from here. This nerve comes out from here, comes across here and goes up over your head. Now these nerves come up over the occipital bone, the frontal bone on the side of the head. A tight scalp presses on these nerves and causes many types of headache. This is caused by tension. A tight scalp is the sign of a nervous pressure and of nervous headaches. Here is the exercise. Place the tips of your fingers on the top of your head with the thumbs at the side. Now work the scalp by bringing the fingers and thumbs together at the same time. Say relax. Feel the scalp relaxing and you will be surprised how very few days required to relax the scalp. With the face muscles, a gentle treatment is essential. Gently pinch the face muscles in the cheeks, under the eyes, around the mouth and chin. Now place your fingers on each side of the face above the cheekbone and raise the muscles up. Then let them drop, saying relax, relax. And that is the way it's done, quite simply by doing relax. Now, if you want to keep your muscles fresh, if you want to be young again, here is the position that you hold the pressure. Gently here. Now, you watch my chin. Well, you're becoming young. <laughs> All you want to do is to place here, put your muscles on this nerve after you have risen them up. Place like this. Now, you feel the muscles of your chin and cheeks come together. Press your fingers on the trigeminal nerves. It makes the muscles firm, yet relaxed. The great beauty treatment is to bring the fingers up round the face and press on these nerves. Say the word cabbage and your face will take on the true expression of relaxation. <laughs> How true that is. You can laugh at it, but it is very true. Say the word cabbage. And you'll see how your face, how your chin and everything comes into place. Cabbage. <laughs> Just feel how your face is relaxed. Remember your face muscles reveal your state of mind. Relaxation of the face muscles help to release the tension in the brain and mind. You look what you are. You are what you look. Feel the facial repose. It works wonders. Give your time to what is in this seventh lesson. You are gradually releasing all the tensions one by one. You are becoming better and better each day. I will close the lesson by saying to you, Remember that no limitation can be placed upon you by anyone but yourself. Draw on the infinite life upon your supply. 
and construct in your divine imagination. It will have to be there before it can express itself outwardly. No one can limit you but yourself. And no limitation can be placed upon you except by yourself. To draw on the infinite life for your supply and construct in your divine imagination divine imagination, recognizing your oneness with life, knowing that the spiritual body is perfect in itself. The physical is but the outer, is affected by the mind, our thoughts, our emotions, what we feel, what we think. The spiritual body is eternal and perfect. The universal mind will not force things upon you that you do not expect. There is no chance. Everything moves according to law. We see that faith and courage, those two work hand in hand. The great universe took shape in the same way. The same power is expressing itself through you now, and there is nothing to fear. The universal mind is the only mind that gives rise to the individual mind, and the individual mind gives expression to the universal. Remember this, and you will find greater freedom in this great truth. The Eternal intervenes on my behalf. Eternal One, thy kindness never fails. Thou wilt not drop the work that thou hast begun. Psalms 138.8 Benediction Dearest beloved, no matter where I go, I will find thee there. In the noise and din of my earthly life, thou art there with me. When storms blow and breakers roar, thy sweet silence shall ever be with me. When in my dreams Memories cast their shadows, thy magic word I am shall prevail. And as I ascend to my full wakefulness, I will cry for joy. I am at home with thee, dearest beloved. So won't it be. It is entered into the sanctuary of the sand.
Font of healing is within the soul. And when we open the gate through faith, we can plunge into the font of healing and there be renewed. For we know that this power is going out everywhere. Those who can, at this time, reach 